Look at it so very easy. My name is Laura and today it is time for block 11 from the free follow along from Quilting Confections and the pattern is called Rainbow Sorbet. Now I've been doing this in two different color variations. The Rainbow Sorbet colors which have been a beautiful selection and I've been doing it in scrappies. So I've started with a big dark bold fabric with lots of different colors in it and that way I was able to use up every little piece of scrap fabric that I had. So as I've been doing projects I've been putting it into that scrap bin and that way I can use up my scraps as I go along. So let's get started today on block 11. Block 11 starts with these four patches and then a square with these corners put on. This is an excellent block for scraps. Each one of these can be a different scrappy color. Just keeping the background fabric neutral, they're all going to match. And when you put more than one of these blocks together, these squares will make chains. And the square blocks are going to fit together. So let's make this in the Rainbow Sorbet selection and the Scrappy selection. The background fabric is going to remain this white tone on tone. And it is two and a half inches by 27 inches. You're going to match it up with fabric A. And it is also two and a half inches by 27 and a half inches. These two together will make these four patches. To make this square with those corners, we're going to start with a really fun fabric, then we're going to add on corners. The center, you will need four blocks at four and a half inches. Those corner pieces, we will need 16 blocks at two and a half inches. Let's make that four patch first. We're going to take those two long strips of fabric and sew them together so that right sides are touching. Match up those edges and stitch a quarter inch all the way down. When that seam has been stitched, before you open it up, press that seam flat. By pressing it, you're going to take those little threads and push them in between those layers so the threads become part of the fabric. You'll actually be able to feel the difference from before pressing and after. Once I have that seam pressed, I want to press the dark fabric to itself so that you have no dark fabric showing in your white. But the first thing I do is I fold it over and I press it with my hands. If I take the iron and just force that seam over, what's going to happen is I'm going to distort this and from making that nice and straight it will turn it curvy. So once you've pressed this with your hands and press it, just moving it up and down or sliding it along that seam. Do not use this back and forth method because again, it's going to want to stretch this. From here, we're going to be able to cut it apart in segments. When you started with strips at two and a half inches, you're going to cut your strips at two and a half inches. So take your ruler and cut two and a half inch pieces. When you are cutting the segments, use the center line and match it up with one of the lines in the ruler. And that way you're going to keep that block straight and it's not going to get twisted. We will need 10 of these. And we're going to re-sew these pieces together so that they're going to be opposing. Because the seams were pressed towards the blue, when you match them up, those seams are going to nestle together. So stitch them together using another quarter inch seam. Once they're opened up, we're going to be able to press the seams in opposite directions. And by going in opposite directions, it's going to open up this little seam right there in that center. And I like to just finger press it first. By finger pressing it, I haven't had that heat from the iron to distort it. Once they're finger pressed, I'll turn them over and repress them. And I'll just press by holding the iron down and lifting up. This square should now equal four and a half inches 
and you will need five of them. The next piece is going to be those squares with the corners on. We're going to start with four squares at four and a half inches. We need to put four corners on, so we'll need 16 squares at two and a half inches. On the back of those squares, we need to draw a line from corner to corner. So we're going to work on two corners at a time. So place two blocks in two opposite corners and those diagonal lines need to be going in the same direction. Then we need to stitch these squares on. I like to stitch right beside my line that I drew from corner to corner. Not on that drawing line, but literally right beside it. It should still be touching it, but not on it. And that's just going to give a little bit of room for that thread. Even though the thread doesn't seem like it takes up space, it still does. So we're going to be able to stitch right beside that line and it's going to go towards the outside. Do that to both sides. Once those two seams are stitched on, you're going to be able to take those corners and fold them over. Just do a little press with your fingers. All three pieces should match. You should have no fabric hanging over and the point should stay right in that point area. When you turn it over, you're going to be able to see that there's no fabric peeking out from the edges. Once we've tested those, we can trim these off to a quarter inch. Next two corners. It's the same method as the first time, putting those two corners on, making sure all the side seams match up, and the seams are going in the right direction. We're going to stitch right beside those two lines. Once those two seams have been pressed on, we're going to be able to test those by pulling those corners back. Just give a press with your fingers and it should match up equally so you'll see no fabric from either sides. And we trim off the rest. I'll take that back to the iron, finger press it first, and then just press down. It's important that we start with well pressed fabric even before we cut them. By having that fabric well pressed, we know that our cut lines are going to be accurate because a wrinkle in the fabric will take up space. It also is easier to stitch and it's easier to hand press. When we're all done, we need four of these units. They also are going to be four and a half inches, which is the same size that we started with. Because those corners did not take up any room, they just replaced a spot. We now have five four patches and four of the squares with those corners on. To start with, we're going to start with the four patch in the corner and put on four corners. So what we're having are those four blue corners facing inside and the four blue facing outside. From here we get to fill in the spots. And let's sew these together in rows by doing the top row, the center row, and the bottom row. We'll match up those sides and stitch a quarter inch. And that quarter inch is going to come right into that intersection and match up to the back. When those rows are stitched together, it'll be easier to press so that you're going away from these squares. That way when these seams are stitched together, they're going to nestle. As we go to sew those rows together, we need to just keep an eye and make sure that our four patches are going in the right direction because it's very easy for that row to get twisted. And what happens is that white now can face the corner. So you don't have to take out the stitches, it's just a matter of returning that row. But that does give us a design opportunity. Instead of having those blue in the corner, we can choose to have the whites in the corner. Once those three rows have been stitched together, we have a decision on which way we want the seams to be pressed. If you're going to make numerous blocks and sew them together to make a quilt, you're going to need to press those seams coming into the center. So what will happen is you will have two seams coming in and two seams coming out. 
so the blocks are going to be able to nestle together. If you're only making one block, it won't matter. You can press them out or you can press them in. When we're done pressing, this block is going to equal 12 and a half inches. For the scrappy variation, I'm going to start with this background fabric that I've been using and pull in the scraps. A brown, a polka dot, and a pink. I'm going to follow the directions exactly the same. The pink and the black, I'm going to do as that four patch, and the browns, the squares. Identical sizes, identical pattern, but it really doesn't look identical at all. Block 11 is now done, and it is quite amazing how changing the fabric can really change the block. I'll put a link in the description to the free pattern from Quilting Confections. And thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.